Ya no está. Good morning. Uh, we are here for a session, online session, in fact, on the subject uh, uh, peer networking for integrated river basin planning and management. We, my, my name is DP Mathuria. I am executive director at National Mission for Clean Ganga uh, under Ministry of Jal Shakti, Government of India. I have a panel here, a very distinguished panel. Uh, we, we, we shall be deliberating on the subject of river basin approach in Indian context, its adoption, and uh, how far this has been successfully applied in the in the in the, in the Indian context. I'd like to introduce the panel uh, that we have today. We have with us Shri Ji Ashok Kumar, Director General of National Mission for Clean Ganga. And then we also have experts from across the world. I have Professor uh, Dr. Dote Ziegler. She is faculty from University of Applied Sciences, University of Koblenz, Germany. Mr. Christian Abel, he is senior advisor and is associated with city of Hamburg with the Department of Water Management. We have lead water specialist from the World Bank, Ms. Carmen Baktista. Uh, Ms. Sharmi Pali, who is, uh, uh, who is from National University of Singapore. In fact, uh, National Mission for Keen Ganga is an authority which has been mandated to look after the issues of pollution abatement of pollution, rejuvenation, protection, and management of River Ganga. The authority has been constituted with overarching role when it comes to managing the River Ganga, which happens to be a basin of uh, approximately a million square kilometers, and the river length itself is about 2,500 kilometers. Uh, the mission as, uh, and the authority, while implementing the mandate and the programs, for abatement of pollution, uh, rejuvenation and protection and management of River Ganga uh, has been looking at various paradigms of river management. It has been looking at the issues of management of the pollution, issues of uh, maintaining continuity of the flows, issues of research and development, issues of involving uh, people's participation at large, and issues of uh, looking at economics for sustainable management of the river basin. During the course, it has been able to create a very viable and proactive network with almost all stakeholders across 11 states in the federation, in the federal uh, system uh, that India has. And uh, this networking has led to very, very commendable and very reflective actions on the ground. Uh, I'll, I'll at the onset, I'll uh, I'll invite uh, our first speaker for the day, uh, Mr. G. Ashok Kumar, Director General of National Mission for Clean Ganga. He'll be, he'll be making uh, the presentation of role of the governance structures in strengthening planning, implementation, and monitoring of river rejuvenation initiatives. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Mathuria. Uh, <coughs> Welcome uh, to all the uh, dignitaries who are present here, join the uh, the webinar today. I thank uh, GIZ for joining uh, with Namami Genge or National Mission for Clean Ganga for organizing this program. My association with the World uh, Water Week uh, uh, starts with uh, in 2004 onwards. And so uh, I've been uh, regularly participating in these uh, programs in the World Water Week at Stockholm. So it's a great privilege to be with all the uh, water experts here. And I'm joined uh, uh, here in my office with, uh, from, uh, with, by all my senior colleagues from the National Mission for Clean Ganga. So peer networking for integrated river basin planning and management is a topic today. And this is essentially captures the spirit of the Namame Genge, the flagship program of the government of India. Okay, this, uh, I'll take a few minutes to, uh, to give, give a background on the uh, Ganga and, and the, the, the program which uh, we implement. The, uh, the Ganga Basin, you can see in the, uh, in the map here, 
it is about uh, 8 lakh uh, square kilometers uh, or about uh, uh, 1 million square kilometers uh, area, uh, area. And uh, uh, we have a distance of, uh, uh, the, the, the river covers a distance about 2,525 the mainstream and there are almost uh, 40 uh, uh, tributaries of this river, you can see in the picture. Uh, this is actually uh, the basin for about 40% of India's population and also uh, the largest uh, growing delta, the Sundarbans at the end of the river. It supports also very rich aquatic biodiversity such as uh, Kanjari dolphins, otters, karyas, and turtles, etc. Um, the uh, uh, Namami which runs the program National Mission, uh, the uh, uh, it's a program run by the National Mission for Clean Ganga. Uh, it's an integrated river management program uh, with a holistic approach, uh, works on pollution abatement, improving the ecology and flow, and strengthening the river people connect. And it is one of the largest and acknowledged uh, river rejuvenation programs in the world, recognized as one of the top 10 restoration flagships of the uh, by UN Decade of Eco Restoration, led by UNEP and FAO uh, on uh, 13th December 2022 at uh, COP15 Montreal. Um, we have uh, five major pillars of this program, the Avral Ganga, the uninterrupted flow, the Nirmal Ganga, which means the unpolluted flow, Yan Ganga with the knowledge flow, uh, the Jan Ganga, the people's participation, and Ad Ganga, river people connect the economic link. So these are the five major pillars on which the Namami Ganga program rests. And um, we have taken up so far about 442 projects at a cost of about 4.5 billion US dollars. Uh, some of the accolades which we have received and the achievements of Namami Ganga, the top one, as I mentioned, is the, uh, uh, the recognition by the UN as one of the top uh, 10 eco restoration programs of the world. We were invited to participate in the UN Water Conference in 2023, where um, we held meetings with about uh, 13 uh, countries, and all of them were interested in joining hands with us. And uh, we also put forward the concept of a very interesting peer network of River City Alliance. I'll come to that later which would be uh, one of the very unique uh, uh, net peer alliance all over the world of the cities on the banks of rivers. Uh, the uh, achievement, I said again, uh, continuing with the achievements in Namami Genge, from 2014, we had many stretches of river Ganga mainstem under severe uh, pollution. We have, if you look at it, uh, uh, two stretches were on uh, category, uh, uh, one stretch was on category two, one stretch was on category three and two stretches on category five. The category uh, one is the, uh, I can see uh, in the uh, table right side that um, it has BOD more than 30 milligram per liter and category five is the lowest with about three to six milligrams per liter. So if you compare that with the 2022 performance, we have no uh, sectors, uh, stretches in category uh, four, for four and um, below, uh, we have the uh, the category five for two stretches, and two stretches are come out of the pollution stretches. So there is a substantial increase in the uh, in the um, uh, pollution abatement programs in uh, taken up, and and the pollution abatement in the mainstem of the river. There is improved biodiversity uh, because of the better uh, pollution abatement works. We have increased the dolphins presence uh, recorded about 4,000 dolphins recorded from about uh, 2,000 uh, about two three years back. We have also seen increased uh, ranching of uh, uh, Indian uh, major carps, uh, the, the native species of fish fishes, which were actually dying out. Now we have ranched about 9.3 million of those fishes, and they are uh, uh, it's an indicator of the improved water quality. We have also started a lot of biodiversity programs uh, uh, in the banks on the river and have taken up a lot of activities to ensure that uh, the trees are uh, for afforestation is taken up and the biodiversity is um, maintained. So uh, the governance structure and peer networking, as I mentioned, peer networking is one of the main core areas of our, 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 our program. Uh, Honorable Prime Minister always talks about Jan Andolan, uh, Jal Andolan, Jal Andolan and Jan Andolan, mean, meaning 
all the issues related to water should be taken up through the uh, people's participation and network. Uh, so these are, this is the governance structure of the program. We have a National Ganga Council headed by the Honorable Prime Minister himself and has uh, 10 uh, union ministers as members and about five uh, chief ministers of the mainstream as uh, members. Uh, that's why it's a very powerful uh, networking body uh, at the apex. And then we have an empower task force with the minister heading it and various ministers, uh, ministries representing in that. We have a Ganga Council headed by the, uh, and the Executive Council headed by the DG, myself. And uh, then we have the state Ganga committees and the district Ganga committees. So uh, uh, this is a five-tier structure which works on the pollution abatement programs. Um, we have um, the Ganga, again, uh, uh, actually, uh, very, very core area for of operation for Namame Ginge. This is a concept given by uh, Honorable Prime Minister. And this is basically a self-sustaining uh, model to make the river people connect. And formation of uh, FBOs, farmer-based organization, is part of one of the pillars, the zero budget natural farming. Uh, we have public participation as, uh, the, as the fifth uh, pillar and institution building as one of the sixth pillar. So if you notice the other Ganga, which has a tagline, banking on river Ganga, is, is actually promoting a lot of peer networking and, 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 and a cooperation in, uh, to, to work for the abatement of pollution in the river and systems. We have uh, uh, the district Ganga committees, as I mentioned, or the last of the tires of the, of the, uh, of the governance structure. District Ganga committees are the committees headed by the district magistrates, the head of the districts, the lowest more, uh, level of administration. And uh, these uh, play a major role in uh, working as a decentralized uh, center for administration of the programs and also gives a uh, bottom up feedback from the ground level on what is happening on the ground. So, this is the uh, concept we have taken up was the, uh, this, uh, uh, the, um, Ganga committee, uh, district Ganga committee meetings. We started uh, the program in a uh, in a big uh, push on uh, April twenty second, uh, uh, two thousand twenty two. And in the last one year, we have done almost one thousand six hundred and seventy nine meetings of all the Ganga district Ganga committee. This is called the forum meetings, monthly mandated, minuted, and uh, monitored meetings. And the next important network which we do is about the universities. We have signed MOU with over sixty five universities. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the students of these universities are joining us, uh, we, joining with us in keeping the Ganga clean and also to spread awareness. We also had meetings at the international level with IV, IVCA uh, and, and the UN High Level Political Forum uh, in New York. We organized monthly virtual seminars, igniting young minds with the various uh, students from the uh, universities who talk about their experience in, in, and join us in the Ganga cleaning actions. Uh, another very important alliance is about the Urban River, uh, river City Alliance, which is an alliance of uh, cities on the banks of the uh, rivers. It started off as an uh, alliance of cities on the banks of River Ganga, and it was so popular that we extended it to the other uh, 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 cities on the banks of other cities or other rivers also. Now we have 143 member cities uh, from India. And uh, when we went for the conference at the uh, uh, UN Water Conference in New York, many countries had shown a lot of interest in joining the alliance. So now we are looking forward for a global uh, river city alliance if possible. So this is a very uh, uh, good platform for sh experience sharing and ideate on various aspects on how to use river as an economic growth engine. There are so many things which we can do, not only as using river as a growth engine, also we look at um, uh, pollution, urban flooding and pollution abatement activities and sharing of best practices, as well as um, uh, 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 exchange of uh, um, good ideas and better governance practice, et cetera. So this is going to be a one big major uh, uh, game changer on, on the peer, peer learning mode. So this is the framework of the urban river management plan, which we have done for the RCA. There are 10 major uh, areas of uh, we are defined. Out of this, uh, uh, eight are on environmental issues, uh, sorry, six are on environmental issues, two are on economic issues, and two are on the uh, social uh, issues. So uh, as I mentioned, our 
activity has always been on getting people together, getting uh, experts together, and also thinking together and working together for the improvement of the uh, uh, the Ganga and its river basins. Over to uh, Martina for the river basin approach. Thanks a lot, uh, to Mark. Uh, yeah, let me let me introduce uh, Miss Martina uh, to, to the to the audiences. Miss Martina is leading the uh, support uh, to Ganga rejuvenation program that uh, and that uh, with GIS assistance NMCG is running, and she is the she is the lead uh, she is the country lead uh, from the German side. And she'll be talking about the river basin management aspects of uh, the program. Thanks a lot, um, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Maturi. Yeah, so just briefly, so the structure that uh, the structure that was just described in the um, from the different levels, basin, sub basin, district level, city level. How is that now practically implemented when it comes to river basin management? Yeah. So now, as, uh, as was mentioned, so NMCG is really taking this river basin management approach. What you see here on the map is the Ganga Basin. What is in blue are two states of the Ganga Basin, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh. And uh, in yellow, you see one of the sub-basins, the Ramganga Basin. And in red, you see uh, four districts. Now, uh, right now, what has what is happening is that on the Ganga Basin, for the Ganga Basin, between 2010 and 2015, seven uh, Indian institutes of technology developed a Ganga River Basin Management Plan, a real strategic plan looking at the wholesomeness of the Ganga Basin. What is done now in the next step is building on this plan for the Ganga Basin, moving down to the sub-basins, and developing really practical and implementation-oriented uh, sub-basin plans, and then uh, aligning them with district-level plans and aligning them with the urban river basin management plans that uh, were just mentioned as part of the urban um, of the River City Alliance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The approach that is adapted is oh, yeah, too fast. The approach that is uh, that NMCG is adapting is really based on international experience. It's based on the river basin management cycle, so uh, that uh, you first you have a real good governance structure that was already described, and uh, with all the stakeholders involved on the different levels, you develop a basin characterization. You uh, define your key water management issues. You develop a program of measures. And if you do a risk analysis, you develop a program of measures to, um, uh, to, uh, to achieve, uh, to, to tackle these risks. Yeah. And then you monitor, you implement, you monitor, and then uh, you start this cycle again. And basically, this cyclic approach of five, six years is now applied on all the different levels. So to align also the plans that are made on the basin, sub-basin, district, uh, and urban level. So a, a practical uh, example for the Ram Ganga, one of the river basin manage, uh, the uh, sub-basin of the Ganga that we are currently working on. So here we brought together around 20 stakeholders from national and basin level, really involving a lot of people and a lot of expertise in a way as it was not really done so much before it was more project oriented. And now it was really all the stakeholders together uh, defining the key water management issues, the main issues in, the, uh, in this basin. Of course, pollution is still one of the sources, uh, as it's point source or non-point source pollution groundwater, river hydrology, flood risk encroachment, sand mining. These were defined by all the stakeholders together as the most important um, key water management issues to be tackled in this, first, um, in this first stage, in this first plan. The approach that is applied is also the Dipsier approach, which is also internationally recognized to really do uh, uh, a targeted risk analysis to look at the drivers, the pressures, and the impact, and then uh, assign different risk categories to the different stretches of the river, 
and develop a really very practically oriented program of measures. And this is really important so that you move from this planning to really implementation and that you move to an implementation that is also integrated with each other. And um, where, oops, where you really integrate this, uh, moving well here, okay, so that the sub-basin plan is really also integrated with the district plans. The districts play a very important role, as was already mentioned. They are all, uh, there were 139 districts just on the main stem of the Ganga, and implementation in the end happens on the ground. So um, the districts can take a lot of decision and they have a lot of, they were given a mandate, an official mandate and an authority notification by the Indian government. So that it's, they play a really important role. And now it's important to bring the district boundaries together with the hydrological boundaries of the basin. Yeah? And this is why these river, these sub-basin plans are very much aligned with the district plans. So um, all the districts have to do these plans. It's mandatory for them to do it, but it was not so clear on how to do it. So for that, then uh, we have developed um, a framework together with the districts and with NMCG. We have developed a framework um, on what these uh, district Ganga plans should look like. And uh, we have now started to work on uh, in four districts together with uh, WWF. Uh, Again, peer networking and cooperation and bringing all stakeholders together, where we have now done um, the, the framework and analysis in the situations. We have now four district Ganga plans that are ready as an example. And just next week, the trainings on river basin management will start. So this is where you see the, how the uh, structure is practically implemented and how NMCG is really now moving forward into this river basin management approaches. Uh, thank you, Martina. I just uh, the last slide of this team. Uh, so, Namami, uh, the Namamange has really, uh, as I said, moved from uh, an engineering countries to uh, people's participation programs. So, all the programs are based on a decentralized uh, approach, uh, uh, planning from uh, bottom up onwards. And that exactly is what the river based management planning also, the, uh, the expertise uh, uh, from the uh, GI said. On, in the uh, uh, mode of management, this approach is taken up in a big way. And we are also supporting uh, the activities of uh, GISR with the, uh, with the local officials to ensure that the proper planning is done so that the implementation is much more coordinated and, in, and it gives results. So to that, we have uh, also started strengthening the institutions um, to for getting improved planning and coordination. We are also setting up a national base, a base uh, sorry, river basin management unit within NMCG for planning and implementation of the RBM schemes. And also, uh, we are looking for uh, uh, cooperating uh, expertise, uh, experts from uh, the international arena who have uh, done works in, this, in the same sector, uh, particularly in the climate uh, change uh, scenarios and adaptations and mitigation sectors. We are want, wanting them to be a part of our pro planning process and the expertise can guide us in ensuring that the plans prepared are well, well, uh, grounded uh, well and that it will show good results. Thank you uh, for the patient hearing. So we are looking forward for uh, uh, a lot of uh, inputs from the experts in this group so that uh, this could be one of a very, very good model for the entire world to, program, to follow. We are now taking it up to the other rivers in the country. Namami Ganga is almost clean. So we are taking the lessons learned from Ganga to the other rivers in the in the country. We hope that this can be used for other rivers in the world. That's what we're looking for. Thank you. Thank you, the uh, uh, Director General, sir. And uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Martina Bukhan. Uh, in fact, uh, river basin management and integration of various uh, aspects of the uh, management uh, is a very, very interesting uh, subject. It has been a very exhaustive and a, you know, excellent presentation. Uh, we now enter into the next uh, uh, phase of the session, which involves interactive discussions with our experts. We'll be largely discussing on adoption of the river basin management approach uh, in the Indian context. Uh, uh, the, the the format is that uh, there are certain questions and uh, 
will go as per the time which is available i'll be uh, i'll be i'll be requesting all the experts to please please keep the, the time in mind uh, in fact uh, my my first question uh, i'm posing it to uh, professor uh, dr dote zigla uh, in fact if you look at the ganga basin it happens to be quite a large basin and we have in fact devised a system of having national state and district level authorities who shall be looking at the plans at various levels and shall be coordinating for implementation of those plans however uh, i'll i'll ask that in your opinion and based on your experience with the poblens university how can different countries come together for an effective cooperation for trans boundary river governance a ganga happens to be a trans boundary river so please reflect uh, on this 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 observation okay thank you mr maturia for this question and thank you especially for the interesting input by mr kumar and martina burkhardt on the river ganga and what has been achieved in the past decade here in an impressive way yeah i think the transboundary cooperation in river basins is um, yeah crucial and essential to solve water issues and this is actually the major reason why countries come together to solve these problems because they have these problems water doesn't know any boundaries in its basins and um, even if we have a lot of administrative uh, boundaries our water basins don't have them and when we have a problem in the upstream and we don't treat our wastewater or we build a lot of dams to transport ships and to um, yield uh, hydropower this will have an impact in the whole basin also on the other countries and downstream countries also can have an impact on upstream countries as we see here at the river rhine and i'm sure you see that also at the ganga river when there's a, a lot of construction going on to prevent floods, uh, storm water floods from the coast to enter the river basin, this will have an impact on fish migration, for example. So here in the Rhine River, uh, actually the major challenges increased and always inspired transnational and transboundary cooperation. Two very famous examples where one was the Sando accident, a big industrial chemical pollution from a from a big fire in the 80s, 1980s, when a lot of, um, of fire water, distinguishing water with chemicals entered the River Rhine and increased really uh, increased um, an ecological damage. A lot of fish were um, dying and also drinking water quality was endangered because all the cities along the Rhine depend on Rhine water for their drinking water, not only in Germany, but also in the Netherlands and in the Rhine river basin, we have about 60 million people living there. This is less than a 10th than in the Ganga river basin, but I think also at the Ganga basin, you will have more and more challenges to solve. Yeah. It's not with the uh, wastewater treatment plants and decreasing the BOD that your challenges are solved, there will be more challenges to come. And uh, with your interdisciplinary approach, I think you're on the best way to solve them. The second big issue was the floods in the 1990s, which um, were really severe and caused extreme damages. And then a uh, big, big international, yeah, or a lot of talks were held to coordinate flood prevention measures and flood risk management measures. Um, incre including to restore floodplains and to improve warning times, alert times, and things like that. And I'm sure with the River Rhine, this is not the end. As Mr. Ebel will also confirm, we are now confronted with climate change impacts, with droughts and low water tables in uh, summer times, and also with floods and different um, water regimes in the future, uh, also from decreased snow melts, decreased glaciers. So there will be a lot of challenges are ahead of us. Yeah. So also the other topic is micro pollutants. They also uh, have to be dealt with and our wastewater treatment plants now have to improve their phosphorus removal and their micro pollutant removal. Yeah, so finally, it's um, this year, we have problems in river basins with our rivers that connect us in across nations, across states, across district boundaries, and also across the different sectors working together in a river basin. 
and uh, the rivers call us to cooperate to solve these issues. And I think since we all depend on water for our lives, we are called to cooperate to solve these issues also in the future. Yeah, and I think the river basin management cycle is a really valid approach to go forward to increase this dialogue across the different uh, subjects, expertises, and to find the appropriate basin-oriented solutions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor. And uh, it was, uh, in fact, it's true that uh, the rivers of such a uh, such a uh, huge, uh, you know, uh, uh, catchment areas does have a lot of challenges, both in terms of quality and quantity as well. And similar kind of challenges we also face. And uh, they, the 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 peer learning does offer a lot of uh, lot of positive traction in handling those kind of uh, those kind of issues. I'll come to Mr. Uh, Christian Ebel. Uh, uh, Mr. Christian has been involved in uh, uh, early stages of implementing European Union water framework directives in Germany and in particular for Air River. And he has a uh, number of years of experience working um, with RBOs for Air River com Committee. I'd like, to, uh, uh, I'd like to understand from you uh, that based on your experience from uh, your work in Germany in, and in particular in, uh, in the context of Rhine and Ebb River, can you share your opinion on governance, governance structure that was put in place uh, for these rivers and uh, how they have contributed uh, towards their rejuvenation? Thank you very much. Uh... And uh, thank you for inviting me this morning to this table. Uh, uh, as you know, Germany is a federal state. It's consisting of 16 countries who are responsible of the management of the water resources. And it's very similar to the state organization could be seen as similar to, to India with this federal organizational structure. And uh, all uh, the competence of managing surface and groundwaters relies with the countries, and it's embedded into the federal water law. And we, and every province or country has an own water law, uh, its own water law. Unfortunately, and that is a pity, rivers and groundwaters do not respect administrative borders, they've only flow according the, the, gravity, the, the gravity. And that's really a, a pity since uh, 2000, the Water Framework Directive was introduced, which uh, basically urges uh, the, their members to manage their rivers and uh, surface waters in river basin oriented approaches, formulating river basin management plans. Uh, and that was quite a challenge for, for, for Germany. Uh, before, uh, before Germany re reunited in 1990, uh, the Elbe River was the most polluted stream in, in Europe and there was hardly any possibility to, to, to restore the river due to the high pollution load coming from the east. It was a re, with the reunification in 1990, uh, the, the International Commission for the Elbe River was founded. This is a transnational organization uh, uh, which uh, enhances the cooperation between the Czech Republic and Germany in river basin management issues. And furthermore, we have created river basin management committees uh, in which all the states or the countries in the corresponding catchment areas are members. And that is done in the concept of implementing and agree on common goals of the river basin management, uh, harmonize the implementation and the measures, sketch up a, a program of measures, an agreed program of measures between the involved states, uh, evaluating also the, uh, the, the, the success. And what is very important, uh, we have uh, aspects of the river basin commissions 
and distributed functioning functionalities between decision level, level and working level. The river basin commission structures in general, be it the Rhine or the Elbe, is, consist of a consist of a decision level that is the ministerial level and the working group level where we where we join as experts from each state to address surface groundwater floods and heavies as consultants to the decision takers in the commission we think that with a sound river basin commission structure this is the adequate instrument administratively to react or to organize the process of river basin management within the, within the basin. Yeah? And what is important, the implementation of the program of measures remains with the countries or the districts, if you like, or with your provinces, because the programs of measures have to be financed by each country in the river basin management itself. But the framework of the program of measures is agreed commonly in this river basin management uh, commissions, and it is a story of success. I can tell you that, for instance, the elaboration of the program of measures on the Rhine and the element uh, of the program of measures in river basin management, the, the blueprint of the Rhine Commission was taken somehow as an element for the river for the water framework directive which came into force in the year 2000 so the 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 river basin management plan basically its core is organized within the program of management and the river basin management's commission structure is from my point of view the key to success to organize the process but also to delegate the, the, the responsibilities in a federal state. Keep that in mind. It is participating in a river basin management committee, does not stepping down from your competences, but to create synergies. I feel that is a, that is the important message I would like to leave. And it is an adequate structure to bundle all the knowledge of the experts within the river basin management uh, area uh, over all a catchment area. And you have an, a continuous uh, process of moderation and communication uh, and of the river basin management committees furthermore have a secretariat which is paid by the members in order to assist the organization of the process of, of, re of, the, of, of reporting and uh, of data gathering and to assist uh, the experts group. That's from my part, as I can tell you, this was what we what what we applied okay. and was quite successful, I think. Yeah. I'm myself. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Christian Nebel, for uh, for for informing us uh, that uh, uh, the program of measures. In fact, uh, if I if I draw similarity between what you have told and what uh, we are doing in Ganga Basin. We do have a we do have a system wherein we constituted authorities at various levels. I have said, as uh, Director General has also told that at national level, state, and district level, we're working that uh, each each level there should be a plan, and then those program of measures should be implemented and implementable at those levels. And I'm sure uh, we draw a lot of similarities between uh, those uh, these two aspects. I'll now move to our uh, uh, you know. Uh, Ms. Carmen Rosa uh, Batista from uh, World Bank. She is uh, uh, she is uh, uh, she has uh, her extensive uh, experience in subjects of water and sanitation service delivery across uh, various uh, continents and countries. For example, U.S., Latin America, Africa, and South uh, Asia. Uh, I like, uh, ma'am, to reflect. Uh, uh, well, I'd like you to look critically and uh, based on your work experience of working internationally, that how the governance structures which have been put in place for rejuvenating the river Ganga, uh, are, they, are they sufficient or uh, globally there is something else to be put in? 
and do you feel that networking among peers that uh, uh, we have been into it has attained a critical mass to bring the results for which this authority has been you know uh, visualized uh, over to you ma'am Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maturia, for that introduction. And thank you also for the inv invitation to participate um, in this panel. Um, so let me just start by saying that as we saw from the presentation from Mr. Kumar, NMCG has made impressive strides in recent years thanks to his current governance structure and legal framework. This has provided autonomy for decision-making, financial resources, and coordination mechanisms between central and state government. And this actually has allowed NSMG to adopt several innovation mechanisms, such as the HAM PPP model and the one city, one operation scheme that has been um, successful in managing domestic wastewater. And as NMCG consolidates efforts to reduce pollution and also works towards these other emission objectives, which includes improving ecological flow and strengthening the connection between people and the river, I think it becomes increasingly important to evolve into a, let's say, a river authority or a river basin organization. And this will require, um, as we heard, a concerted effort to scale up the river management and planning uh, initiatives that you're doing, and also perhaps strengthen the current governance structures to accelerate this. And uh, with that spirit in mind, I would like to share three good practices based on the World Bank experience in river restoration programs, mainly in uh, the Bogota River Environmental Restoration and Flood Control Program in Colombia, and also taken from the Mekon Integrated Water Resources Management and the Jiangxi River Protection and Ecological Restoration Program in China. So uh, basically, uh, three main aspects I would like to mention. One is to assess the um, to basically, um, first I would say is to improve the or strengthen the knowledge base uh, aspects with technical analytical studies to assess the river water balance, to investigate environmental flow options and not align with the Namame Gang emission, and to also develop forecasting models that consider how to manage uncertainty, in particularly related to climate change and rapid pollution growth. I, these tools uh, will support networking among peers, inform also river basin plans, and also support NMCG and other stakeholders in their decision-making process. Second, I would say to build a solid data management system with an interface for water quality and flow monitoring to support uh, its regulatory functions and also to communicate the status of river health to the public. Some of this work is already on the way, uh, for instance, with the install installation of real, real-time monitoring water quality stations to measure the impact of wastewater treatment plants and also monitor the water, um, water quality in critical stretches of the river. And third, um, we have, uh, Martina has already talked about the river basin management and planning efforts. So I would say to, um, to scale up those efforts, building on this work supported by GIC. Um, and for do, to do this, um, uh, there will be a need to uh, strengthen the governance structure that you have at the moment. And I'm happy to see that you have as next steps these dedicated unit uh, to actually um, work on river basin management and, pla and planning, not only at the national level, I understand that it will also be representation at the state level to ensure this coordination that you already have with the infrastructure investments. Um, this unit, I think, will be really valuable in coordinating roles with various nation, uh, national agencies that also work in the uh, Ganga Basin. We have seen this in several countries, the need that to have this uh, interagency coordination platform to do that, in particular when there's competing, perhaps, mandates. 
In addition, I think it is important that this governance structure supports the creation of sub-basin river committees, which is perhaps what you were talking about, this district plans, to ensure stakeholder participation from local communities, NGOs, and private sectors, so that there's a needs and perspective are taking into account. And here, um, I'm really happy to see the River City Alliance in the and the Urban Rural Management Plan, which is bringing different stakeholders and putting together a plan uh, with a holistic view. So this type of government structure um, that you're working towers and accompanies with river planning allows for a more holistic approach to river management. Um, for instance, to help with effective water allocation among sectors and also application of water use efficiency for agriculture, for instance, uh, the, re the reduction of water related conflicts and, and also the implementation of ecosystems restoration to ensure the long term health of the river and its habitat. So in closing, um, NMTG has the political support, the legal authority, and the know-how to improve its current governance structure to support and accelerate the river planning and management in a participatory, participatory and sustainable manner. And here at the World Bank, we are really excited and honored to support some of these initiatives on the second national um, Ganga River Basin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Carmen. Thank you for elaborating on uh, many finer points. Uh, they, they, will, they will be quite helpful, I'm sure, and they will find mention in our recommendations as well. Uh, we are, in fact, running uh, somewhat short of the time, and uh, uh, with time in mind, I'll uh, directly come to Ms. Sharmi Palit. She's a uh, public uh, sector professional and has also been involved in various other flagship programs in India, for example, Swaj Bharat Mission, for example, Namami Ganga as well. Uh, Sharmi, I'd like you to briefly dwell upon your experience as to what do you think, uh, uh, how can this local level stakeholder partnership uh, can be uh, better engaged in basin governance and uh, what role do you ascribe to these institutions? Uh, you can be brief while... Uh, uh, being, being, uh, you know, by while discussing this issue, Sharmi. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, so coming to directly to the question, local level stakeholder engagement it's very important and must take uh, center stage in all basin governance strategies. And now the simple question would be why would that be the case? And that is because engaging them would facilitate shared uh, decision making, identify common goals clearly bring out expectations of all different groups in you know uh, facilitate a dialogue sharing process and enhances accountability from all so as you mentioned i have had a very i've had the opportunity to work with namami gange for two years and i can share my experiences how and how this was carried out so the first example would be the like there are some very uh, passionate volunteer groups which are there on field like the Ganga Prairies and Nehru Yuva Kendra Sangatan etc. And they are not just supporting the program by raising public awareness but are also you know for instance the Ganga Prairies are engaged in imparting livelihood training skills. Now what is important for us to understand here it's just not that these groups are helping the program achieve the uh, the mission goals or the, you know carry out day to day activities, but it will actually help in you know mobilize the communities and maintain the momentum long after the program finally exits the field. Secondly, what we tend what generally tends to happen is that. These policies are mostly designed at the central level and often, you know, a bottom-up approach level is, you know, we fail to incorporate it. So from the Namami Gange case, what usually happens is uh, local NGOs and CSOs are engaged, you know, by through various means, voluntarily or formal agreements through MOUs, etc. And this actually gives a platform for all the voices and concerns to be heard or addressed and need-based activities to be carried out rather than one generic size that fits all. Third, I think, would be the children and youth, which are the different another side which is very important, especially in a case like India, which is a young nation. And, you know, because our, our all our efforts are 
may aim not just for sustainably managing existing resources, but also leaving a secure future for them. So they do have a right for a clean river with adequate flow and thriving ecosystems. So I think these are very important. And uh, I hope this answers the question, you know, with the paucity of time. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sharmi. In fact, this definitely answers the question. Local stakeholders are very, very important. They shall be eyes and ears to what our activities and what we are doing. And whatever we do, uh, ultimate, you know, acceptability has to come from these stakeholders only, uh, the people in the hinterland. Well, uh, this, uh, uh, this has been very, very interesting. Uh, um, and this, in fact, has posed few other questions. For example, making the river basin resilient against climate change, making the basin resilient against uh, disasters, which you often see. So I'll again come to Director General National Mission for Clean Ganga. Uh, sir, uh, what do you think NMCG is ensuring, uh, while ensuring an effective multi-stakeholder involvement and engagement, uh, particularly in uh, you know, pollution abatement issues? It has been quite successful. But um, has this engagement been really successful and really you know, impactful while handling very, very sensitive issues like making river basin resilient against climate change as well as against disasters? What do you say? Uh, a very important question uh, because uh, all uh, the water sector is probably uh, has the best manifestation of uh, of climate change because that directly can be shown. We have seen the uh, devastating floods which is happening in many parts of the country now. So um, uh, and and there are issue times when uh, there are uh, droughts, severe droughts affecting, and there is no water flowing in many of the rivers. So one of the things which we have taken up is. Uh, uh, is rejuvenation of smaller rivers with the help of uh, uh, communities. So, uh, pulling up resources from uh, various departments uh, of the on various schemes of the government of India, we are actually working on uh, uh, rejuvenation of smaller rivers, uh, springshed management, etc. And second is uh, we are also looking at uh, the uh, for better flood prediction models uh, with the CWC, etc., so that uh, people can be properly forward and also uh, we using the uh, support from the NGT etc we are looking at uh, removing the encroachments on the river banks and protect protection of flood uh, flood flood, uh, flood plains and we are also taken up a lot of afforestation activities so that uh, the silt which actually causes a lot of uh, floods because of the bank uh, river uh, bank uh, rising in uh, level that can be contained so uh, afforestation has been taken up in a big way and um, uh, at the lower down below at the sundarban area mangroves etc one very very good protection for uh, or abatement of various uh, climate changes issues so a lot of activities are being taken up and all are taken up with the help of people uh, involvement of people and community the success of namami gange had been its very close interaction with the people and involvement of people and we look forward for more and more involvement of people for both what uh, from uh, from to, to push the, uh, to, uh, the uh, various aspects of the program top downwards as well as to get feedback from uh, bottom up uh, from the people uh, down uh, down below with the expert group supporting us in giving the right messages to the people. Thank you. Thank you, Director General. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this has been a very very important concern and often being flagged. A uh, number of initiatives have been launched to uh, to 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 create an oversight uh, when it comes to issues like impact of climate change and uh, looking at the issues of disasters, which quite often happen. Uh, uh, and I believe that no exercise is complete without involving the stakeholders. We must be having a lot of audience, and I must be having few questions, so we can spend uh, a minute or so for the questions. In the chat box, can you open the chat box? Any questions? Otherwise, I don't see any message in the chat box. Uh, okay, so uh, we don't have any questions. Uh, uh, the the subject of uh, if there are no if there are no if there are no questions, I would make a couple of remarks to climate change and how we tackle this issue in Germany. We have the Rhine River and the Elbe River, and they are affected differently by climate change effects. 
The Rhine is nourished by the off by the melting snow in the Alps. It's rich, it's 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 every year we see less snow falling in the Alps and are very concerned of it. Then the, the because the flow of the Rhine is diminished and on the Elbe River we see uh, sea level rising effects and those are the the two issues we address within our river basin committees as well and we have introduced the aspect of climate change as river managed river base as a as a as a topic for thank river you, basin uh, management uh, thank you mr christian and uh, we are in fact at the fag end of this uh, session i'll i'll li now like to hand it over to miss martina burkard who is heading the program gz program with nmcg on uh, strengthening of river rejuvenation for the closing remarks as well as uh, closing the session. Over to you. Yeah, thanks a lot uh, for all the, the contributions. Like always, time is running short. We all think that we want to have so much time to discussion and then all of a sudden the hour is over. So a quick points that were made in this discussion. I mean, rivers, that was the, that's the basis. They don't know boundaries. They all call us uh, to cooperate across borders. Um, this is about across country borders, about across state borders, about across district borders, that uh, cooperation is needed. And for that, to, all, to have a clear governance structure where also you have clear mandate to the different organizations, whether this is as was described in the European Framework Directive or whether the legal structure that uh, NMCG has uh, as, per, uh, as per the Indian government. So that you need these kind of structures to really be able to bring the, all the actors together. This is absolutely crucial. That's one thing that we've really realized. And uh, so to agree on certain topics, on issues, there are a lot of problems we all are facing from pollution accidents and micro pollutants, but then the overall uh, topic of uh, climate change and flooding and drought and all the other aspects that are caused by this. So you need a clear legal uh, framework and uh, river commissions, river basin commissions, organizations that are overall responsible are really needed. But then it's absolutely crucial to involve all the different levels, uh, states, districts, and also delegate. You agree on the measures, but then you delegate also the implementation. And without the public uh, participation on the ground, without having all the people living in along the rivers on board, then things are not able to be done. I think this is one, so one thing that we all really need. So with that, I thank all the participants of today's <laughs> meeting. Of, uh, I thank again, uh, Dörte Ziegler from the University of Applied Science in Koblenz. I, uh, I thank uh, Christian Ebel from the city of Hamburg and uh, Charmi Pallet, and uh, uh, of course, um, and, uh, uh, and Carmen de Batista from the World Bank. Thanks to all of you, and thanks for all the participants for listening to, uh, to today's session. And of course, thanks a lot for, to DG, uh, Director General NFCG, Mr. Uh, Giyashu Kumar, for implementing this session, Mr. Maturia, for, uh, for the moderation. And uh, let me also thank on behalf of the, uh, of, of the German government for this really wonderful cooperation that uh, we have with NMCG for a long time already on this river basin management. It's really a pleasure to work with this organization and to work with all the people working in here. So thanks a lot for this and uh, wishing you all an interesting day and again, a lot of interesting sessions at the World, uh, Stockholm Water Week. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are closing the session. Thank you. Thank you.